Welcome to the Skill Builders Guild. It's Tuesday night. We're, um, doing stuff. <laughs> We're having fun with the fun haver. Um, hit the like button if you haven't already. Um, Tuesday nights used to be uh, Lightroom Live. I'm sort of not totally doing that every every week. That's more of a monthly thing now. But um, we, uh, we started building this gatekeeper uh, kit on Sunday. And uh, behind the scenes, uh, you know, kitchen show style, here's the cage, totally complete. Hopefully everybody can hear me. Uh, check in, let me know where you are watching from, and um, how many gatekeepers you have. <laughs> uh, I've got this one right now. Um, so hopefully everybody's having a good week so far. It's, um, yeah, I wanted to get this to this stage for tonight. And um, if you were following along with the live build on Sunday, you'll probably notice there's a lot more metal on the front of this uh, gatekeeper. It's also independent front suspension now, uh, courtesy of Artful Dodgers. We've got a new stainless uh, skid plate on here and some A-arm um, protectors. Also running his um, shock mounts on there as well. And these are great because they include the panhard mount as well. So if you're running a solid front axle, you can still run a pan hard with these mounts and not have to use a secondary piece. So it's all in one. It's weird that my hand is Yeah. <laughs> still it it's it's uh it's a weird thing. This me in a bubble here, it still freaks people out. There's a couple people that have been like, "Can you just go back to the regular square of you?" with the background and everything because <laughs> this is this is strange um yeah so here's a gatekeeper cage on here uh, i haven't put the front hinge mount on because i'm not really at that point i'm going to be taking things on and off a whole bunch and um i just kind of wanted to have easy access to everything while i'm doing the next part of this build which is modifying things Cheers. Hopefully everybody's having a good week. Kids in the hall skit. Yeah, exactly. Um, crush, crush. Uh, here, where is it? Crushing your head. Crush, crush. Well, actually, that's pinching. That's crushing. Crush, 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 crush. And then there's also nobody's home. Nobody's home. All right. Um, so anyway, uh, here's the gatekeeper kit all assembled. I'm running Spectrum Electronics, uh, running their Firma, which one is this? Uh, 60 amp, Firma 60, uh, attached to a Firma 2100 kV brushless sensored motor. Uh, for the time being, I'm running uh, axial kit tires, the Nitto Trail Grapplers, because... Like any good build, you need to have references. So there's the reference photo. You may have seen that on the thumbnail from Sunday. Uh, this is Lauren Healy's uh, Fun Haver. Triton Engineering built this chassis. Uh, it's sort of a Bronco, uh, but there's a lot of modifications to this body to make it such. But uh, I wanted to have the same tires, and eventually I'll have the same wheels on there. Right now I'm running some methods. Uh, that uh, these are the incision methods and I modified them slightly as sanded the outer ring just to give it a beadlock ring appearance uh, We'll be getting wheels more suited to this build at some point, but as you can see There's already a lot of similarities, so we're getting there Which is good. It's very good Am I using a wraith spawn body? No, Steven, I am not and it's funny you mentioned that anyway um same independent front, solid axle rear, uh, caged interior, because it is a cage truck. These are just body panels that they put on here. Um, and most people, uh, I've seen a lot of people using the, um, the Wraith Spawn body to do this kind of look in this build, and that is very cool. A um, couple other people, myself included, we're going to be using the Bronco hard body. This is the new bright. Bronco hard body. Uh, it's a two-door Bronco, which is exactly what 
this truck is based off of. So they are the same in that regard. But that's about it. Tonight, we're going to be chopping this up. Yes, I spent my money on this. Um, and I'll never get that money back. That money's gone. Uh, but we're going to need to chop up a lot at this at this stage to get it even to fit on the chassis. Now, one thing you're going to notice straight away is that this is way too wide. Way too wide. Uh, Ryan Davis, yes, uh, Spec RC has, has made a lot of wheels that are close to that. And uh, I've already got a set of Spec RCs on the Gladiator. Chopping or cropping? Yeah, actually, you're right, Wes. It is sort of uh, it is sort of a cropping episode of uh, Lightroom Live without any of the Lightroom stuff. I just noticed I missed a screw on the cage. Don't anybody look right here. <laughs> Don't look there. Uh, that's the tray as Trax's body. No, no, no. This is a hard body, hard plastic, new bright body. Uh, the Traxxas uh, Bronco is a four-door model, which would fit this wheelbase perfectly, but it wouldn't match the look of the truck. So we're going to go with the hard body. And I'm going to get to chopping. Um, this is sort of a, a trial by fire. You can cut once. You can measure a whole bunch. You can measure a whole bunch, but um, time for a new bright sponsorship. This video not brought to you by... Um, so yeah, it's sort of, like I said, trial by fire. There are a lot of things that need to happen. The first thing, uh, that I'm going to do tonight, and we'll definitely get through this is I'm going to cut out the rear portion of the bed. We're going to cut off the bumper, <clears throat> excuse me, cut off the bumper and get rid of this tailgate because back to the reference photos, there's no back on there. It's just open, not brought to you by it, exactly. So we're going to lose this whole section back here so we can see the cage. And we'll figure out a spare in there as well, because, you know, realism. What scale are you? Right now, <laughs> gosh, I'm probably like, oh man, I'm probably like 16th scale in comparison to everything around me. That's funny. Quack RC, thanks for the two bucks. It will look awesome. May the force be with you. Thank you very much. Um, so that's what we're going to do there. Uh, because this is such a narrow cage and the tires stick out quite dramatically, a lot like my um, LS post that Westmade did, we're going to have to narrow the whole body too. And that's, hi Coach D, that's going to be a big deal. Um, so <laughs> that one's a bit more of a challenging cut. Uh, one that I won't probably do on camera because we've gonna, we're going to have to section out like probably close to an inch and a half throughout the whole thing. What we're going to do, though, before we do that is we're going to cut the hood off because you have to, it also has to contour in. It has to get quite narrow at the front, so it's going to get a pinch. Or uh, if it were in the rear, it would be a dovetail. At the front, it's a pinch. So the best way to do that is to cut out the entire top portion here, heat up along the sides, and bend it in. And then once you've done that, you can actually take the whole hood assembly, cut some of the hood out at the front so it's the right length again, and then do your cuts on the sides to have it fit perfectly. The whole grill is going to have to come out uh, if anybody's asking again, this is a new bright. Bronco body. New Bright was the first one on the scene with a RC. I use that term very loosely because while it is remote controlled, it's god awful. And the only thing good about it is the body. So most guys go out and get this at like Walmart or whatever. They instantly take all of the bottom half off and then sell these on eBay for double the price. <laughs> it's just the way you do it. Um, so, okay, let's get started. Um, all I'm going to need, really, because this first cut is going to be a fairly easy one. I'm going to get the chassis out of the way so I have a little more room to work. There we go. That's better already. 
Uh, what we're going to do first is the rear tailgate, I think. Um, and what I would normally do if I were uh, cutting something like this and I was doing some pretty intricate cuts, I would probably clamp a ruler down. And this is a really effective way of getting a nice straight line. Uh, you'd clamp down, here, just get a clamp. There we go. Everything within arm's reach. I would get a clamp on top and the bottom here. And this is just assuming that you're like cutting this in some other way. What I would do is I would run uh, a hobby blade along this edge. So you get a nice straight guide mark. And you run that through a few times. And this is not the line I'm using. This whole piece is going to be removed and never used again. So I don't really care about ruining this. But once you've got this sort of like score mark in your plastic, and I'm just doing this quickly just to show you, get a little demo. And you've got that score mark in there. You can sort of see it. It's, it's there. When you saw through that guideline, the saw will want to stay in that channel that you've created. So it does make it a lot easier on you getting a straight line and it gives you a much better result in the end. So top tip of the day. Hi Dana, I, I don't remember. <laughs> I don't remember that license plate on the SBG sticker sheet. No, that one didn't come with, but it's not a bad idea. I actually have a few good ideas for a couple of new ones, and uh, I think they're going to be pretty good. All right. So this is the saw I'm using today. It is a flexible razor saw. I got this on micromark.com, and uh, it's very flexible, has really nice sharp teeth, and uh, goes through plastic like butter. Like butter. So this is pretty much all I use. If I'm in a hurry, and I'm not worried about the quality of the cut, I will use a Dremel. Oops. I will use a Dremel. This episode not brought to you by. Um, with just a standard thin cut plastic cutting wheel. Um, but these make a lot of noise on uh, on a live stream and not my favorite way to do a, a cut um mostly because this can get away from you i'd rather be patient and take my time and go slowly and screw it up slowly rather than screw it up very quickly so um that's another option if you don't have a razor saw and you uh you feel like you're comfortable uh, I've also got a couple of other saws here. This is just a finer tooth, but it's a thicker blade. Uh, and it's just, you know, like one of these sort of Excel hobby blade things. Band saws actually are great. And I kind of wish I had a band saw because I could just make my straight score line right along the middle of the body here and just slice right through it. It'd be super quick. Um, but. Hashtag screwed up slowly. <laughs> yeah. Um, also, if you are going to be doing any sort of cutting with any sort of tools, power or not, it's a good idea to get yourself a really nice pair of safety glasses. Now I look and feel smart. 10-inch bandsaw. Yeah, that's all you need, Dana. All right, so let's try and do this so you can see it. Um, I'm going to follow the score line here. I know it's not accurate exactly to where this is cut, but this is a fiberglass body that they plopped on a chassis. So it's not actually ever going to be the same exact thing, but I think with some stickers and stuff, we can get away with it. And you can see the cut line is basically at the fender. So it goes like it flares all the way across here. So what we're going to need to do to make ours look a little more realistic is get rid of the tail lights, get rid of the fuel filler door, get rid of these outer fenders. Uh, there's going to be a lot of additional work once we actually get to it. But today it's sort of like the first cuts are the deepest sort of thing. So we're just going to get through some of the more intense stuff. 
Um, hips are mad up to a 10 now with those glasses. Yes! <laughs> All you're missing is the white tape. You know what? Maybe for uh, tomorrow's stream there will be white tape on there. Um, somebody was asking... Ken Venturo, uh, Venturino, sorry, uh, can you put links to all your tools? I don't have links. I bought these things like before the internet existed. I don't know, not that long ago, but I've had them for a long time. So, um, yeah, you'll just kind of have to, yes, these tail lights do pop right off. They're just glued in place, I believe. And uh, we can probably get them out right now. There they go. See ya. Wouldn't want to be ya. <laughs> but we'll save those. They could be useful. All right, here we go. So I'm going to cut along this line right here. And uh, I'm just going to go slow. And I put a nice bit of pressure on the body so it doesn't, like, skate around on me on the, on the desk. And uh, just keep following that line. Now I could go a lot faster, but I don't want to. And in fact, I'm not even really going for anything like super accurate at this point. It's just like, just get it done sort of thing. So um, it might be simpler now that I look at this. That's not a Jeep. Uh, it might be simpler to just actually go right along the bottom first and cut off the bumper. So we're gonna do that instead. But it's my prerogative. I can change my mind as many times as I want. We don't need to be too finessy with this. Is that a bone saw? <laughs> Look at how fast it goes once it gets a like a good grip on something. This plastic is not the finest quality. Use a torch. <laughs> Would a rigid blade be better than a floppy one? Good question. Um, I have a rigid one, but I don't actually like it. It doesn't give me the same feel. This I can I can sort of vary the pressure. If the cut starts to go a bit wonky, I can actually sort of correct. Why are you sawing this apart? I just got here. <laughs> well, because I like to damage things and, and uh, irreparably re uh, change them. No, it's because we're doing um, a fun haver build, uh, which is a Triton Engineering based uh, Bronco esque Ultra 4 buggy. So try to keep up. Floppy doesn't give it the same feel. <laughs> My blade is floppy too. Like I said, not too worried about cuts here. This whole piece is going to be removed from like here down. So I can be a little liberal in my uh, technique. You're so patient, I'd be gremlin. Yeah, I know, but hey. It's too noisy. <laughs> too bad it's not a real Ford bumper. It would just fall off in 20 miles. Ouch. Boom, roasted. 
Uh, if anybody wants any of these pieces, too bad. <laughs> I am not keeping them. All right, nice clean cut. <laughs> Nobody ever said that RC stuff was glamorous. And yeah, you're right. Dremeling would be faster. But then I wouldn't be able to talk to you guys. Nice hands. Well, thank you. But do you see how easy it is to follow that panel line? That's a nice clean cut. That's what you want right there. Hello, Scale Metal Supplies. Um, seeing as uh, this is a fun haver, I might need to have some fun on your website soon and uh, order myself some tubing because uh, I do have a lot of uh, builds coming up that are going to require some metal work, so I will be definitely reaching out soon. I have seen the Bosch Mini Chainsaw. thing is cool. The other reason that I'm starting on the back, long travel for the fun. Okay. All right. Interesting. All right. Okay. So that's the back part out. Now, I like to clean as I go. I hate leaving a mess, especially of like plastic and styrene dust. So I do try to do my best to uh, keep that all under control. Bit sweaty from all the effort. Yeah, I absolutely hate making a mess on the bench. Don't make a mess on the bench. Why don't you use a Dremel? Because a Dremel could get away from you. It melts a lot of material. And um, it's not as precise. A razor saw by hand is going to do a much cleaner job, in my opinion. I did, at the beginning, suggest that if you had a Dremel or wanted to use a Dremel, you could. I have, you know what, Blake, I do have a vacuum but it's my wife's Dyson. Actually, it's our Dyson, but, you know, she uses it mostly. I don't mean that in a sexist way. We both do the cleaning. In fact, I do all the vacuuming here at home, but um, I don't want to ruin her vacuum. So one other thing, there are these gigantic body posts in here, which are super annoying. Uh, Dremel plus plastic is a stinky mess. Exactly. That's another good point. Uh, let's get those out of there because those are annoying. Do we razor them out or do we... Those we can Dremel. Safety goggle time. Hopefully my Dremel battery is charged. See, now that's something you wouldn't want to listen to for 20 minutes. That would be really annoying. And stinky for me. All right, so basic fitment. A little tall right now, but that's obviously going to change still. Um, it's actually looking like it's going to fit pretty well. A downdraft table. If I had room for stuff like that, I would have done it a long time ago. Believe me. Some modifying may be needed 
to um, the cage. I think the cage specifically because it still looks like it's not really anywhere close on the top there. We've got a lot more cutting to do before we can determine that for sure. Um, but uh, yeah, I think this is going to work. All right. What should we chop off next? What kind of buggy is this? Kevin, this is a uh, element gatekeeper that I've converted to IFS. Can I buy it from you when it's finished? <laughs> Everything's for sale. Everything has its price. I like being in your mind. <laughs> yeah. All right, well, um, next thing that we can get rid of is let's do the side uh running boards uh darwin yes i print in tpu fairly often i use tpu for inner fenders it's a uh, an amazing uh amazing plastic for that purpose always works really really well How hard was it to convert to IFS, Dustin? It was super easy because Element makes the IFS kit. Uh, do you want to see that real quick? It's as simple as it's actually it's it's plug and play. They they could not have made it any easier. Um, you literally don't put on the front axle, and you put on the IFS system. It's it's a bolt in no issues whatsoever it's it's basically made for it so in my opinion it makes the gatekeeper infinitely cooler so there you go just buy it assemble it install it super easy uh tiny overlanding the gladiator is not for sale sorry but uh we won't be selling that quite yet. Now, something to keep in mind here, and it's probably just for people like me, there's a little tiny, tiny, tiny piece before you get to the actual door. It's, it's super tiny. It's, it's really hard to see. You can sort of see it there, just the littlest, tiniest lip. We're gonna save that because it does contour the door at the bottom there much better. So, um, I'm going to do my best to sort of uh, show you this as we go. What I'm going to do first, though, is score that line so I know where it is. The best cuts come from the best planning. And in fact, if I'm really lucky, I might even be able to score this enough that it just snaps right off and I won't have to cut it at all. That would be, that would be best. Shredding 44. Is this a crawler? How does it differ from say a rift or a laser nut? Well, it is, a, it is based on the element enduro. So it's a crawler through and through. A rift is a 4S crazy machine designed for hill climbing and rock bouncing. Uh, the laser nut is a little more ultra four, um, definitely like more of a rock racer. I wouldn't use it for rock racing, but it's definitely more in that vein. The gatekeeper is definitely a crawler through and through. IFS of course hurts performance a little bit, but more and more, Ultra 4 buggies are running IFS these days, so there must be a reason. Does the gatekeeper come with a gladiator body? Uh, no. The gatekeeper comes with uh, body panels that go on the cage. Similar to the bomber, I guess, in terms of the look. 
but not anywhere else in terms of the performance. Let's see if we can just snap that. Mm, uh, yeah, I think we'll get it. Safety goggles. Solid axle still winning. Yes, of course. Yes. Exceptional. Anytime I can save myself all that time. Ah. Superb. Just what I wanted. Dale C, that sounds pretty awesome. Sold the condo for way too much, but that just allowed us to purchase our first house. Congratulations. That's amazing. Home ownership is great. Scorn Snap does work sometimes. It really does depend on the on the quality of the plastic. I would not say that New Bright plastic is all that hard. It's pretty soft. As you can see, I'm able to put a pretty decent score line in there. That's why the score and snap method is working so well. This episode also not brought to you by Excel Hobby Blades. Um, shredding, no, that's a stock out of the box kit. Um, Gatekeeper. I assembled it. I added a servo and an ESC and a motor, and that was basically it. It's as it comes. Is that the new Traxxas knife? <laughs> no, it's not. But I, I'm willing to wager that based on how this one looks from Excel, that Excel made the Traxxas one. Because it's pretty darn near the same uh that gray roof uh b cockner came that way i didn't paint it that's what new bright thought they should do remember this came out long before the actual bronco was available to even order i think yes matthew jorgensen exactly do a search for lauren healy fun haver and you will find this body so there's the other side panel removed i wonder if the score method would work on the fenders i bet it would are you able to purchase just the body yet no <laughs> big red bitch don't worry matt i won't go three blocks away to tell to excel and tell them <laughs> you can you could ask them though ask them for me Say, hey, Scale Builders Guild, they know who I am. Scale Builders Guild wants to know, did they do the blade for Traxxas? Now, sorry, I'm going to have to get this here. So actually, maybe we'll switch to me. <laughs> no, actually, that that's not going to work. <laughs> Let's cut back here. I'll just try to figure, I'll try to get a good angle here so I can get this cut. We're just doing the score and snap method to see if this is even going to work. I hope that it does. Because it's so much faster than trying to saw. The saw is good for big, long, straight cuts but if you can do a score and snap that's always my preferred method lexan or hard body a hard body rarely will you be able to do this that was that was all the worst of the stream <laughs> full screen yep i think wes was it you that said less of more of the truck less of your ugly face was that you? Koshner, sorry. Sorry. Pronunciations are hard. 
Are the band-aids handy? I don't need them. I rarely, rarely, if ever, cut myself. Jinx. Now, see, that's going to be a bit thicker. I do know Excel makes a saw. I have it. What do I search for to see a photo of the body? You don't have to search. I can just show you. There you go. Can't hurt steel. <laughs> I want none of you and Morgan Freeman. I'm working on it. He's not available. Not available right now. I don't think we're going to be able to get that to snap. I may have to cut those manually. And that's going to be a real pain in the ass. One that I didn't feel like doing. One thing I might actually consider doing and looking at the uh, references again, I might be able to get away with um, making the whole roof line shorter. Like I may be able to actually section out here and just pop it all down an inch or not an inch, but like half an inch. Maybe that would help with fitment on the cage. So we'll uh, definitely see that. Wait, that's what you're making? Yes, that's what I'm making eventually. Um, let's cut the front bumper off because we don't need anything. In fact, we don't even need the grill, really. All we need is the words Bronco. All the lights get removed. Everything comes off. So... Chopped and channeled. Yeah, totally, Kevin. Was some guy being a doofus? Looks like it. Oh, well. Can't please them all. Am I right or am I right? Or am I right? Or am I right? Mods don't play. Exactly. That's why I have the mod squad. Thanks, guys. All right, so let's see. What could we could we do here? I mean, technically, we could cut out the whole grill today. Do I focus on that? That's going to be a pretty challenging cut. See what we can do here. Feel like it. Hmm. I wonder if that's a good idea to start there. Chop the. Okay, let's just do it. Hey, we can always fix it later. There will be a lot of fixing to make this all go together again. Once I get a good score line in here, I will hit it with the saw. I think this is the most like choppy, choppy stuff that I've done in a video live. Probably the most dangerous stuff I've done live, too. It's like Brazing Live, How to Burn Your House Down edition. Hi, Moose Jaw. Does a light bar get sunk into the grill, or is that a bar in front of the grill? It's, it's instead of the grill. It's a pretty uh, unique front end. It's going to take some doing to get this gatekeeper to look like that, but we're going to get as close as we can. Is it all one mold? The body? Yes. The grill is not separate from the 
the rest of the body. It's just one big giant piece of injection molded plastic. If you have no plans on keeping the grill, drill a hole and use the hobby saw. Well, that's sort of where I was getting. Because now that I've got that score line, the saw wants to follow it. it. Wants to go in the hole. Go in your hole. Ken Venturino, thanks for the $4.99. Just because. That's really cool. Thanks, man. Much appreciated. Now, keep in mind, most of this hood is going to get chopped up anyway once we do the, the pinch. But I don't want to um, I don't want to damage any more than I have to. You know, the idea is to try to be as non-destructive while being destructive as possible. That's a quote for Wes. Hope you're paying attention. Parts of this body are thick, other parts are not. Save the grill, punch the hood, <laughs> buy some styrene. Are you making a Bronco? I love it when people I like I love it when people check in and haven't read the description, looked at the thumbnail it's <laughs> this is going to become this i'm putting this on this gatekeeper it's gonna all gonna go together <laughs> eventually we're not there yet Oops. Don't cut through your finger. I wish there was like a safety goggle for your finger. How much deeper is that? That's what she said? We're almost through. Oh, we're we're getting there. Gloves. Hmm. Matt and a go fast. Well, it's not technically a go fast. I mean, it'll it'll go, but it won't go super fast. Ah, that's what I was hoping for right there. We're in. Chainmail gloves. Right. Travis hasn't mentioned anything about PPE, no. But I'm ripe for an accident. There's these things called gloves. Yeah. Yeah. Gloves are a thing again. It's not. I'm getting a little out of our out of our areas there. Gloves are overrated. Exactly. We need to get you a good dovetail saw. Hmm. That sounds interesting. You know, when people say a little bit of blood, sweat, and tears went into every build, this is what they mean. Robert, we're <laughs> this is going to be a long video. Yeah, it probably will be. Um, 
the intention was just to sort of get started, show off some of the cuts here, and um, you know, we'll move on. Oops, move on again at another time. But yeah, there's a lot to do. Not uh, not gonna lie. And I'm getting sweaty. It's very warm. Very humid today. Ah, safety is always third. Ah. Did we take the Dremel off the table? Yeah, the humidity is a real killer. I, it's it had we had a huge thunderstorm earlier today, and it was just, it's just so mentally hot, it's crazy. Be careful! I'm doing my best. Oops. Careful, me. Can I turn the air on? Oh, please do. <sighs> yeah, sweats begin. I, you know what, though? I don't need any of that part. I only need basically the, the letters, the words. Thankfully. And we're through. I have to fix that. Guess your hobby room isn't air conditioned. No, but it's usually a lot cooler than this. I'm gonna take a little break here. Crack a cold one, even though I haven't technically earned it. Braided fishing line, floss, that also works. Yeah, you can use any of those things. Yes, we have a Discord. I don't know that I'll need a custom light bar. I might be able to get away with uh, a gearhead one or a vanquish one. I might even have something in my my lights bin that could work. Sandbag. Hmm, that's a good idea actually for something to hold something in place. I like that idea. <coughs> Who wants to bet he bleeds today? Really nice. Really nice, RC Steven. Really nice. Here I am making nice quality content for you guys. And you're taking wagers on whether or not I'm going to hurt myself. Real nice. That's why I'm using a saw and going slow. <laughs> Excuse me. So mean. I wouldn't wish that on my worst enemy. Plus, doing this on video is not as easy because, honestly, I wouldn't be holding it like this. I'd be holding it against my body probably. which you might argue might not be as safe but that was a mean comment yeah we'll add that to the list
I guess it's not an exciting live stream until there is blood. Now this, I'm going to get to a point in the curve and I'm going to stop because I want to try to keep that existing curve in the actual body panel there. So uh, I'll have to come up with a unique way of getting rid of that. <laughs> Saw a really cool video of a Japanese carpenter sawing a single block of wood into a folding stool. This is very far from that. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Hot knife would cut through all that in about two minutes tops. Yep, you're probably right. Uh, but I'm old school and this is what I have. Well, I wish I had a coping saw blade, but I don't. Is RC a blue collar hobby? Uh, no, I don't think so. I don't think it's a any collar hobby. Thanks for the vote of confidence, Jim. It's an all color hobby, exactly. I would never put, you know, I would never put any restrictions on this hobby. This is for everybody. Do you like tiny trucks? Do you like driving tiny trucks? Do you like building tiny trucks? Then this is the hobby for you. So much yellow plastic dust. We go. It's a sweaty color. <laughs> uh, if you didn't watch the video of the actual uh, build of the gatekeeper, I do suggest you go back and watch that. Um, it was pretty entertaining, if I do say so myself. All right. Fun Gilder as opposed to Fun Haver. That's a good one. And do, yeah, do you like to spend money? This is also the hobby for that. <laughs> All right, I'm going to take my time here and try to uh, score this nicely. This probably would be a good opportunity for some kind of specialized tool that I don't have. But hopefully with enough scoring, we'll be able to... Uh, get this off pretty easily. Did the dust go in a slurry bowl? No, Brett, because this styrene is absolute garbage and um, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't bother to use it. I have another thing, another jar of styrene slurry all ready to go in case I need it for this project. Um, so yeah, I won't, be, uh, I won't be reusing any of this styrene. It'll all go straight in the garbage it's pretty trashy. And yeah, this is definitely a like, this is a thinking man's um, kind of project. You really have to think about all the things you're going to do well or 
hopefully before you're doing them. Uh, Low Life RC, next Lightroom Live, it's always the last Tuesday of every month. So there's another two weeks, I think, before we do one. That is thick. one side I like to measure nuts cut 40 times I was saving up for a TF2 Marlin after seeing the pictures of yours right on Jared I'm glad that mine uh, inspired you to get one how much did that body cost I don't like to talk about stuff like that <laughs> Because it always makes me sort of upset, knowing that I'm just going to cut it all up and ruin it. So, I don't remember. But it was more than $20. For the record, only one X-Acto blade so far. Which has to be a new record for me. But for all this sort of like, just sort of, you know, not really um, finesse -y kind of work, I don't mind using the same one over and over again. I'm just scoring a piece, not making any fine looks. You're going to make me look it up. I well, Honestly, I don't remember how much I spent. I should probably put these on. More than $99. Yeah, that sounds entirely possible yeah all right why did i buy this again <laughs> all right so some rough edges there we've got some some sanding to do for sure and some cleanup and i mean lots of stuff still to re be removed if i'm honest we're gonna hang on to this because we will need those bronco letters $34.99. I think it was more than that too. I didn't buy the whole New Bright from Walmart. You can't, I don't think you can get them anymore. I think they're long gone. Uh, the scalpels seem to snap them up pretty quick. Um, but I just, yeah, when I buy it, it was just the body. Looks like our fender line is actually probably going to be pretty close to where that actually is. So keep that intact we will need to build a front bumper and uh some sort of mount for the light bar to go on the, the chassis but that's all good clarkdale make sure you bought the right one there are multiple sizes uh there's like an 18th scale one this one is the ninth scale one uh, it's very close to the dimensions of the traxxas body the traxxas body is slightly larger and it's a four-door um, all right, you know what? I think that might actually be a good spot for us to sort of pause, maybe answer some questions if anybody has any, and see what it's basically going to look like. Obviously, this is nowhere close, and we still need to come down dramatically onto the cage in order to make this work properly but you can see that it's gonna get there eventually the fenders of course all go this needs a pinch um, we might have to lower the whole roof line what inspired this build this did the real truck this is lauren healy's uh <clears throat> fun haver are you scratch building the fenders i guess i'll have to there is a little bit of a a little indentation there but yeah i can just build up what exists here with some styrene scrap and glue that in place all that's going to come much later definitely not in a live video 
Uh, no, it's not a pre-runner. It's an Ultra 4 car. Um, they're, they're different, for sure. A pre-runner is a different vehicle. Flares. Yeah, like the, the outer flare, yeah. Yeah, chopping the roof line. There still is a bit of those uh, things that have to be cut off. The whole hood's going to have to be removed in order to do the pinch. Cut the top half of the gatekeeper cage. Yeah, I guess we could lose that if necessary. I would drop it down for sure. I think, honestly, just getting rid of those inner, uh, inner bits here, that'll help a lot, too. Uh, but yeah, I think it's going to be a fun build, definitely. I uh, hope you guys learned a little bit of something about body modification. The body is going to get sectioned, yes. It's going to be narrowed. Um, he's drinking an artisanal wheat beer with organic effervescence. <laughs> uh, yeah, this, this is just a Ace Hill Mexican lager. Nothing fancy. Front is wide. Yes, front is too wide. Front's going to be pinched. And the width is definitely going to be narrowed. It's going to fit right up against the cage. Those are a little bit more of a cut I need to pay attention to because I need it to be perfectly straight when I put it back together. I would hate to uh, to do something and, uh, you know, mess this up so badly. So it's gonna. I'm going to need to measure and do a lot of, like, thinking about it and uh, did you say why you didn't use a Dremel? Yes, uh, it makes a lot of smoke, noise, stink. Uh, it's toxic when you use it to cut up plastic like this. And um, I, I'm, I'm more happy with hand tools. Yeah, I'm, uh, I can see that it's thin at those posts. I'll be really careful on that when they're scale metal supplies. Thanks for the, the word of warning. You can actually see if I, in the light there, you can see where the body post mold kind of deformed the top of the body when they pulled it out of the mold. Uh, Aoun's RC, I don't think I'm going to need to put a wider hex on there because once this body gets narrowed up, it's going to actually sit right up flush to the cage. So the whole body is going to be sectioned. I'm going to remove like probably an inch and a half from the center and then glue it all back together. So. That's uh, that's the plan. And if I end up needing a wider hex, I'll put a wider hex on there. I've got lots of hexes for these wheels. And in fact, these aren't even the wheels I'm going to go with, probably. Can you IRS? Um, you probably could. I've, I've not done it. I don't know anybody that has. But um, I'm sure it could be done without too much trouble. Anyway, that's sort of where we're at. I have a Dremel Kyle. It's right here. I just don't like using it for cutting up bodies. Because if it gets away from you, then you've ruined the body. It's a lot easier to cut slowly and more precisely than it is to use a Dremel and make a huge mistake and really regret it. So, to each their own. If that's what works for you, good for you. I've got no qualms against that. This is just the way I like to do it. Got you covered for a wider front. Cheers, man. Thank you. Um, cool. Have I tried using JB Weld plastic weld? Uh, I have not. Are you going to strong back for body? I don't know that. No, I don't. Don't uh, take it personally. It's no big deal. Um, it's just this hobby is for everybody. Um, it is helpful to have knowledge of tools if you want to get into the, sort of the modifying of stuff. But the best way to learn is to practice. Uh, yes, hard bodies can be surprisingly rare and expensive. And uh, seeing somebody chop up a perfectly good one can often make people cringe a little bit. But, um, you know, it's the only way to get something really unique and really special and completely yours. So... Yep, lots more to come on this, obviously. <laughs> but I think that's going to do it for now. Um, 
Thank you everybody for watching. Uh, we've got another whole live show tomorrow night, so I figure an hour of this is probably a good place to end for now. I gotta put my thinking cap on and get some of these more uh, aggressive cuts done. Harley, make it, made it before the end. Thanks for checking in, Josh. Um, yeah. All right. I think that's gonna do it, guys. Thanks very much. Uh, who do we have to thank here? Quack RC and Ken Venturino. Thank you very much. Are you ever going to build a WPL? You need to watch the channel more. We've got a WPL. I've been working on it slowly but surely. More stuff will be happening to this too at some point. All right, guys, that's going to do it. Thanks, everybody, for watching. Much appreciated. Be sure to check in tomorrow night for live stream takeover. Josh and I will be talking trash and the Scalies. We've got the Scalies Awards to uh, finally get underway, so we're going to start making up some categories tomorrow night. Um, thanks to the Mod Squad. Appreciate it. And um, hopefully everybody had a great time. Hopefully you learned something, too. Um, Enjoy the rest of your evening. I will see you tomorrow night at 9 p.m. Eastern. Bye, everybody. Take care. Love you. Bye.